Hey, you still there? That's exciting. Hey, today is gonna be a good day. I'm gonna show you how to trace a design on the helmet and how to start the project actually. So if you wanna go, we're going to shop, come on. While the other helmet is in the is in the oven waiting to be ready to send, uh, I want to take this opportunity to show you guys how I trace my line, how I measure my next design. So, uh, like I said, I have this Bell HP7, and I'm going to trace the line, measure everything. The tools that I use to do this are very simple. I use my good old trusty measuring tape that I stole from my mom when I began 25 years ago. I use a uh, tracing compass. You'll see what I use it for later. Just a simple HB pencil. So 10 years, I think, uh, I've been using this, this device that I, that I had a friend of mine, a, a machinist, build for me. It's, it's simply a, a metal rod inserted into a brass sleeve here and all of that is supported by this big metal foot there uh, and then I attached this this bizarre kind of attachment that I had um, and I found a way to attach my my pencil here so it turning table that I have it allows me to trace all my horizontal lines on the helmet this is how you can achieve some horizontal line this is probably a must-have for anyone who's serious about painting helmet you need to have some kind of a device like that or find yourself a way to trace lines like this I've tried laser leveler stuff like that doesn't work for me this is still the best way I'm gonna show you how I use this thing although on this particular design I don't have much use for that thing I'm probably going to use it only for for that white line here and maybe that those two lines are going to be the one traced with that. The rest is going to be all done by hand uh, and all measured. So because there there's nothing quite horizontal in that design. The design is going everywhere. So you know I'm not going to use it as much. But I still wanted to show you how how I do it. Let's go. Okay. Of course, like I said, the lines are not going to be absolutely horizontal. I need to somehow get the front of my helmet higher so the lines are going to be horizontal like that but when I when I drop it the lines are going to be at an angle like that and this is what I want to achieve I had to do these things are these very high-tech two by trees that I will just come and drop here the reason I have two of them is uh and you're gonna see it in a few minutes is the fact that I can adjust them to find my level now the front has been lifted is it enough i think so i think it's enough i don't need sometimes i can go even higher than this to have very steep lines but i need to make sure that the helmet is well leveled the the only way to, to do it is to use the visor screw inserts here because the visors are molded in plastic they're all the same those insert needs to be exactly placed always at the same time from the manufacturer and it's very important some manufacturers are better than other I normally get good result by using these things as guide these rivets for the chin strap are not always placed at the same you know exact spot from helmet to helmet and I found out the hard way through the years. These are not really reliable, except for the Arai helmets, which are always spot on because they use a laser guided robot to drill the, to drill the shells of the helmet, all right? Very important, mask your rivets. If you're a helmet painter and you wanna be serious and you don't do this, this is a no-no. You need to mask those ripped you can't paint over that it looks bad those inserts on the bell needs to be masked as well then to mask the other inserts I cut myself those little round vinyl mask that I just I have like a whole bunch of them cut and I just use them to mask the uh, Hans insert the visor locking mechanism and the visor screw uh, insert what I'm gonna do now is level the helmet so the way I do it I use this tool that I have and what I'm gonna do you now I'm gonna use a point so I'm gonna use like the top of that insert here okay so I'm gonna adjust it so it's exactly at the top of that insert and then I'm gonna go over here on that other side and I and I see that it's I'm about one eighth 
one eighth of an inch too low here. So I want to get this side higher a little bit. So, and this is why I have two blocks because I can work with these two blocks by, I know that by moving this one a little bit backward, this side of the, hel the helmet is gonna drop a little bit. This side is gonna go up a little bit if I move it more towards the center of the helmet. So, I'm gonna do it again. This time, see, I've, I've lowered my, my, this side of the helmet. So I'm gonna readjust here. We'll adjust it here. And I'm still a little bit too low here by about 1 16th, okay? So and now I'm okay. So now I know that this helmet is perfectly level, leveled here like this, so that these two inserts are exactly at the same height. So I'm going to adjust this here. Now, I see that I'm not angled enough, so I have to redo it all. Take two, as you can see now, I've, <laughs> I've lifted the front of my helmet, I've re-leveled it, so right now it's at the right angle that I want it. Now it's time to trace, so like I said, just a little bit under that rivet here that I want that, that white line to appear. So I'm gonna trace it, I'm gonna trace those lines here. I have that other top line here that needs to be done. Next step, which is find dead center of the helmet. If it's a carbon helmet, sometimes you'll notice that there's these two carbon parts being joined at the center of the helmet. Never trust that. I prefer to do this method where I apply a little piece of tape and I mark my relative center where I think the center is, so I mark it like that. Now I take my soft measure measuring tape, this, you know, and I'm going to use the insert and measure my distance from the insert to the, my center line, my relative center line here, and I'm at 166 millimeters, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to measure 166, and as you can see, I was a bit off, okay? So I'm gonna measure my 166 here like this. The center of my helmet is right here between these two measurements. This is the center. Never trust those vent holes as well. From helmet to helmet, it's gonna be off. And I'm going to do that all the way around the helmet. I'm gonna give myself multiple point and then uh, I'll, I'll just trace my line with a piece of tape. You need to understand that everything I'm tracing there will need to be erased before before doing the paint. So yeah. So I'm trying to trace that those two lines here, and since they are parallel, I'm going to use just quarter inch tape to trace both lines. So, but I what I want to do is make sure that this point here aligns with this point here on the other side. So the best way that I found to do it, you know, earlier I've traced my horizontal line. So I'm gonna use that point here, that connection point between my horizontal line that you don't see uh, and the other one. So what I'm gonna do, use a little piece of quarter inch tape that I'm going to just, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where my green tape align here with my center line and I'm going to just mark my line where it, where it aligns. So both points are there. And then I'm going to take this tape and transfer it starting from that point and I'm going to transfer it here to the other one and as you can see when I apply my tape I was off by about a quarter of an inch. So it this, this needs to come back a little bit, okay? So I'm going to mark myself here, just a little mark, and I'm going to remove that thing and redo my tape line here like this. And now, 
my lines aligned. So now I know that this point with center of the helmet is exactly the same distance as this point with the center of the helmet. So now I'm going to trace my lines and move on to the next step. And another way to transfer dimensions from one side to another is, look, I have the space here between these two lines of tape that I want to measure, so I just quickly grab my compass, just open it exactly following my, my, my horizontal line here that I did. So I just measure that space here, come back on the other side, just put it there and see that, oh, I'm off. I'm off by almost three, three millimeters. So I need to move that second piece of tape that was applied there. Okay, so another trick on how I use my uh, my compass here is I need to transfer that point here where the two tape, tape line align here. So I want to make sure that it's exactly at the right spot. So I have my center line here. So I'm going to grab myself here, my center line, measure to the point here, and then transfer it roughly where it's going to be on this side. Okay, now I'm going to move down here, recenter my compass, okay, remeasure from that point to that point, transfer that here. Now I have a little X here, and this is exactly where this point, where the two tape connect, is going to be exactly on this side. So this is another way to use the compass. So uh, that thing has been sanded and so I'm getting ready to uh, do the final clear on it and little trick for you guys. What I like to do when I re-clear a freshly sanded clear coat, I like to add a little bit of reducer in my clear. Even if, if my clear coat is a 2 to 1, no reducer, I like to add like a 5 to 10% reducer to it just so it is a bit more liquid and it flows better on the surface. You need to be careful not to do runs on it. You need to be very careful when you when you do the first the first tack coat. But I like to do that because in the end I think it, it gives a more glossy finish to the clear coat. So just a bit of reducer to your to your clear coat and uh, that should help but uh, be careful with it. And here it is folks, Gracie Lane's brand new Sparkle helmet that we painted together and I'm really proud of this thing. Uh, finish turned out to be more than excellent, a little bit of polishing here and there, but this thing is going to leave in a few days to its uh, rightful owner who's going to use it in the next racing season. So big thanks to uh, Italian motor Michael Valiente and to Gracie for trusting me with that helmet paint i hope you guys enjoyed the uh this part of the process i'll have more for the next project You thought we were done. No, no, we're not done. Uh, I still had a few things on my mind that I needed to tell you. Um, some kind of a disclaimer, I guess. Um, basically, what I wanted to say is my way of painting helmet, what I just showed you in the last two videos, is not the definitive way. This is my way of working. And if you're watching these videos and you already paint helmets, you have your own method of working and stick to it. It's always good to exchange. It's always good to see another guy do custom paint and maybe take, take a few tips from him. But, you know, if you have your own way, if you're happy with the result that you get from 
painting a helmet and the customers are, are happy, then stick to your method because that's the good one. So in no way am I saying that what I do is better than anyone else out there. I'm just trying to, you know, show you how I do it. Maybe it can help you. So it's just a simple exchange here. So keep those comments uh, coming uh, on Instagram. Subscribe to my channel if you like uh, what you just saw. And I'm going to have more videos coming up. Uh, in a couple of weeks. Right now I'm having some renovations done in the shop. They're throwing me out of the of the place tomorrow morning for five, six days. So I'm gonna take advantage of the winter time here and the nice snow that we have. Might go skiing a little bit. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. So peace, I'm out.